because many of us treat them the first ten commandments. What is still connecting me to America? I've got two words for you. More perfect. It's just a great turn of phrase. In 2008, evoking the idea of the more perfect won Obama the White House. It encouraged moral behavior even while it explained away ethical failures. It allowed white Americans to vote for somebody who didn't look like them without being made to feel like they had to apologize for any personal racism or the privileges that white supremacist history has granted us. And I feel like any phrase strong enough to elect somebody named Barack Hussein Obama to the White House after September 11th is surely a good enough mantra to get me up in the morning and go to work advocating for the billions of animals we are exploiting. And yes, I say we are exploiting. Birth control pills, road construction, palm oil, this bottle of water I am going to take a sip of now. All of these benefit me personally, even when I try to become ever more mindful. I exploit. I try not to, but I fail. And then I get up the next morning and I fail again, hopefully better. Or in the common vernacular of our movement, being vegan means I'm trying to suck less. Or in the common vernacular of my childhood, to be more perfect. I've been active in the animal rights movement since about the time I could vote. And I've heard a lot about conscious consumerism or voting with your dollars. And I've used this language to try to encourage people to get um, the message that I'm trying to give them. I've used the I've used the language of voting in the same way that my fellow panelists have been encouraging us to use the language of Christianity to relate to people. I've also been involved in many acts of nonviolent civil disobedience, modeled after the actions of the American Civil Rights Movement of the 50s and 60s. I've invoked the name of Martin Luther King Jr. a lot. He's practically a modern American saint. There aren't many people we are told to take a day off work and celebrate the birthday of. And one of those people is Jesus. And here, I'm not being glib anymore. I'm just confounded. Because the very day that ground was broken on the Martin Luther King Memorial in Washington, D.C., <coughs> Congress passed the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act into law. And that's probably the day that hypocrisy broke my heart. Despite all of the historical precedents that have made my conscious mind jaded and cynical about politics and America, I felt myself shattered inside. It was a huge crisis of faith for me. And admittedly, every morning I think I have a small crisis of faith. I look back at all the years I've spent doing my small and perfect part to heal the world, and I realize that the planet and all of its inhabitants, its ecosystem, and the whole kit and caboodle just got more imperiled and worse during those hours that I was sleeping. So the morning comes and I invoke my more perfect fail better mantra to get me going. It didn't work that day. The ATA shook me primally and it left me with only two choices. I could either just declare myself an anarchist and try to move to an island, or I could challenge my country to take this whole more perfect adage as seriously as I do. I did the latter. I, along with a number of other longtime animal rights activists, sued Eric Holder, the Attorney General, to challenge the constitutionality of the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act. And recently, a federal judge dismissed that lawsuit, 
maintaining that we lacked standing to bring the suit because we have not suffered any specific present objective harm or alleged a threat of specific future harm. And I am here tonight to call bullshit on that. I have spent years living with a Kafkaesque fear that the more persuasively I tell the truth about the animal suffering we build our comfortable lives on, the more likely I am to get thrown in jail. But not only that, I have had the entire underpinning of my morality shaken. If that's not harm, what is? The case is winding its way through appeals. And I am actively trying to divorce my efforts to make the world around me more perfect from this word, America. Because I obviously don't know what it means, no matter how deeply it keeps pulling me back to it. And I know we don't need to invoke, invoke America to keep a commitment to better this world. But I'm here just to admit that it's not that easy to just quit my country, to quit the most, the first things I ever learned, you know? I am marinated in Americanism, like it or not. And I'm talking to you tonight because I believe that many of you are too. I can't be the only one in this room for whom America was held up as a concrete reminder that, as Dr. King said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. I know I'm not the only one who internalized and woke up with faith in a notion that as an American, I have a calling to keep fighting for a better tomorrow. So, I'm going to keep fighting. And in closing, I'm going to ask you to investigate your own relationship with your own beliefs, especially with regards to where you live, the community around you, and the tacit assumptions that you build your morality on that come from them. Because it's only then, when we acknowledge how much <coughs> being an American, just to take my own example, has shaped who we are, it's only then that we can determine what role, whether it's hero, villain, or sidekick, America will play in making this world more perfect for the animals, for the environment, and even for us. So, thank you guys all so much.